What is it that drives you in life? Pretty tough question, huh? Five years ago, I would never have thought that I would stand here one day, that I would be capable of, capable of what I'm doing today. But yet here I am. I was just a normal kid going to school. I did always do my homework, but I also really liked to go out and to drink too much at times, absolutely. And then I honestly don't know when it started exactly, but I do know that I started to care. I started to care and I knew that I had a role to play. And I knew that there were possibilities to do something about the problems in the world because I saw a lot of challenges ahead of us. And um, so I dedicated to spend all of my time on working on sustainable development because I saw and I understood that it would be the only possibility to develop ourselves in a good way to make a place where we live in peace with humans and nature uh, to work on sustainable development and create a sustainable society. So during my journey, during those years, I've learned a few lessons and I really want to share them with you. And those things have become very important in my life and let's just start. First thing is that you need to be bold. So one year ago, I went to Rio Plus 20, the Conference on Sustainable Development at the UN. And one of our main points as youth was to get education on sustainable development in the text. So picture me walking around with my dread jacket in um, the conference hall, and there was the chair of the negotiations on education. So what do you do? You're not going to stand there and do nothing. You're going to be bold. You're going to run up to her and say, I don't agree with the text now. We really want to have some extra text in. That's what I did. And she was really surprised. I was just coming up to her and she didn't expect that and she didn't get angry, but she gave me an opening. She said, this is a quote. Okay, if you're gonna give me a, a paragraph of agreed language, you know that agreed means that all 193 countries must agree on it. Before say 6 p.m., which was in a few hours, I'm gonna put it in a text. Okay, that's what we're going to do. We have a mission. So this is how we do it. I'm going to show you a short fragment from the conference. <laughs> okay, uh, we zijn echt uh, girls on a mission. You see the red girl. And uh, we moeten nog even een paragraaf in de tekst krijgen. Maar dat gaat niet werken zonder de G77. Dus we gaan nu gelijk naar de G77 toe. We hebben daar ook onze jongeren op tegenwoordig op zitten. En we hebben onze papieren in onze hand. We mobilized all the young people that were at the conference to strive for that one goal, to get that paragraph in the text. There I was just entering a meeting where I absolutely wasn't supposed to be, but I had to bring the message, so that's what we did. And we succeeded. We got one extra night, but we worked all night, and we got to all the countries, all the delegation we had to talk to, and it got in the text. And it was very unusual, because at a conference, normally the text is going to be weakened, it's going to be uh, little commitments than there are, are before. And we got extra text in and stronger language, and we just did it. So it was, for the UN it was something strange, but for the young people it was such a boost that we could do something like that at an international conference, that we had that power. So be bold, and you get things done. Absolutely. The ne next thing is that it's very important to work together between generations. Here, this was a few months ago um, at the UN headquarters in New York. I was able to speak at the UNGA on the sustainable development goals, the new development agenda after 2015. And this was just a normal meeting with member states. And there I was sitting, a young person speaking, which was not as it is supposed to be. And it didn't happen if it wasn't for the lady on my left, because she gave me this opportunity. She texted me a few weeks earlier and she said, okay, I really need to have some more power, some more action, some more impact in that group. And I want you to come with me. I was like, what? What's she saying? Is she making a joke or something? Of course I'm coming with you, but are you sure? And yes, we, she said, we're going to do this, and if we're going to do it together, it's going to be very different, because if we're going together, we're going to have 
a big impact because it's different and we can combine our powers to get the best results. So we convinced everyone, and there were a lot of people, to, to let them give up their speaking time, official country speaking time, for a young person. I mean, who does that? And, um, well, as you can see, it worked. And just imagine that you're sitting there, all those gray suits, and suddenly a young person starts speaking a bit fast, because everyone's like really slow and sleeping, you know? And then everyone woke up, like, what? What the hell is she doing here? Why is a young person speaking? That's, that's, huh? They didn't understand what happened, so they started listening, which was good, because normally you not really listen to people. And um, so the message, message came across, and a few minutes later, they understood, like, why are we discussing young people, their future, sustainable development, without actually talking with young people? The topic of that meeting was youth, and they weren't youth. Well, I was there, but that was not really easy <laughs> to manage. So um, I got, in the end, an applause, which also doesn't happen at the UN, and people referred back to the statement, and they really thanked the Netherlands to do this. And that set like a norm, and it changed something in their minds. And I think that's only something you can achieve when you work together and combine power. She had the position and the possibilities to get me there, and I could bring the energy and the enthusiasm that I could convince them that it was a good idea to put me there. You can really have a bigger impact when you combine powers of different generations and work together. But what happens if you don't work together? One year ago, I went to a climate conference in Doha, and we had some issues within the youth group because there was no consensus about how we should get to our goal. I think we have all, all have the same goal that we want to have a more ambitious outcome, that we, have, we want to have climate justice, that we want to have a better future, but no, we had to fight about how to get there. You don't fight about what, what road to take to get to your end, end goal, and you have to accept if someone has a different opinion on how to get there, but you're going to seriously accept someone else and its vision, because if you don't and you decide not to work together while well, you're, I think, on the same side, it's going to have a destructive effect on your impact, because we didn't have a good impact, absolutely not. And I really feel bad about it, because I played my part because I became very upset. And that also didn't have a good impact on the ambience and on everything. So, yeah, it, it was a failure. And it shows that you really should work as a team, and it doesn't matter how, but really do it together. Then the last thing is never, ever give up. I already look annoying here, so here it comes. Rio plus 20 again. One year ago, the big conference, it was for uh, heads of state and government, so I think I'm not the only person that has to go, but also maybe the prime minister. So, but he doesn't like it, you know, so we uh, started a campaign collecting messages from young people trying to convince them and explain why it's important for us to have him there at the Conference on Sustainable Development. And uh, one day, I got a phone call from a friend of mine. He said, yeah, Raleen, you wanted Rutte to go to Rio, right? And I was like, yeah, why? Well, he's sitting here uh, and cl very close to me at a, at a cafe. I go, no, he's not. You're kidding. Oh, are you serious? And he was. So he walked up to Rutte with his phone, and he said to him, we have a message from the youth. Met Mark. <laughs> and I was really quiet, because <laughs> I didn't really <laughs> believe that it was. But I tried to explain why we wanted him to go, why we wanted him to care for sustainable development, and then to go for the, to the conference for us as the young people. But no, it, it didn't work yet. So we kept on trying. We kept on calling my friend, she, of my colleague. She was uh, one day on her bicycle in The Hague, and then Rutte was <laughs> on his bicycle. So at one point, they were really close. And she asked him as well, well, are you going to that Rio conference? We really, really, really want you there. And he's like, no, no, I'm too busy, I'm too busy. Had to negotiate for the Cots house on Holland, you know? And uh, <laughs> so, okay, it, uh, it, it didn't work yet. And we kept on, kept on calling and just give us 
something that we can try to convince him and try to at least get the message from young people because we have all those messages motivating him. And well, the day that we had to fly to Rio, we got half a minute <laughs> to hand over those messages, those postcards with all the um, yeah, things from the young people, why you should go. And he was like, oh, how nice, how sweet of you, how nice. And then we made a picture, so important, and um, uh, yeah. And that was for him uh, enough, but then he said, okay, well, let's have lunch when you're back from the conference, when you're back, because if you didn't notice yet, he didn't go after all. So um, when, um, when we got back, um, we of course planned that meeting and we had it uh, uh, all set, but then we had a new cabinet and he had to negotiate again. So his whole schedule was emptied and we, got no appointment anymore because they couldn't get back those 50 days in a magical way. So uh, we had nothing again. So what we had to do, we went to a meeting of the Liberal Party where he was and uh, undercover because red is like not so smart. So we were in, in, in black and, um, and there he was and we had a really nice talk and just he was like talking like nothing. And, um, uh, and then he said, um, well, he was looking at me like, I know this girl, who is she? What, I, I, I remember something, but I just don't know. So I saved him from his suffering and I told him, well, actually, we already met, you know, Rio plus 20? <gasps> oh, it's her. <laughs> oh, well, oh, it's you, okay, I think I'm gonna get a drink or something. Well, at the end of the evening, we talked again and I said, but uh, serious now, you owe us a lunch. Yeah, I'm busy, I'm busy, I'm busy. Well, okay, after the holidays, in, uh, and that was the deal. So I shook his hand and said, but now I'm serious about it. And there we go. <laughs> Two days ago, <laughs> we could come, had not half a minute, but half an hour, and we talked about sustainable development. He didn't go to Rio, but we brought the uh, topic on his agenda as far as it <laughs> can get there. But we really had a good conversation about the issue, and for some reason, he, in some way, finally understood that it would be valuable to talk with young people about sustainable development and the future. So I really didn't see this one coming, but when we left, he said, uh, well, what do you think about it? I would actually really like uh, maybe to schedule another half an hour next month. <laughs> what did you just say? <laughs> So if you know that something is right, if you have a clear goal, and even if you're that annoying as I was, in, in the end, it pays off, because he also finally understands now that it made sense. And that's what I knew all the time. So never give up, really. And you will absolutely get there. If it's there, if it's Rutte, or if it's someone else, if you want it, it can take some years, but, it is possible. So, what is it that drives me in life? It's still a tough one. For me, it's the enormous challenges that we have in this world. It's the challenge of climate change, about food security, water scarcity. Um, we have ecosystems uh, that are degrading. We have biodiversity loss, we have so many issues, inequality, poverty, it's a mess <laughs> if you see it like that. But that's what drives me at the one side, but what it complements is that the possibilities to solve it are endless. You can imagine how can we ever live with so many people on this planet if we live like we live today. Well, I think that if all the people that live on this planet now are going to really use the possibility and get to the point and get to do something about all those issues, then we will get there. And it's, I would never have thought that I would be capable of doing things that I do today, but I think that it's endless possibilities for me and for you and for everyone in this planet. If you want it, let's go for it. And um, it's just that there is something that we have to admit and that's that how much we love to talk and how difficult it can be to really start doing something. So please, be a bit more bold. It's okay, just be honest. And why don't you just say it as it is, even though it can be a bit not as it's supposed to be? 
maybe you will get a bit further in the end and it will pay off. Work together and also work between generations. Open up to the young people, but also go to the older or current generation to work with them because we need to do it all together. And never, never give up. And I'm really going to keep on doing this because I believe that we can and that we can create a better world for all of us and create better lives for all of us. And you can count on me to do that, but I will definitely count on you to do the same. Thank you. Becker Becker's. Raleen Becker's.